Hello there. I'm calling this one the many gifts of being human. And I'll be looking at things from the perspective of being a human and also being an extraterrestrial. And I'm also calling this one Cosmology 101 because that's really what we're going to be touching on through this film. So let me begin by talking about the many gifts of being human from the extraterrestrial point of view. We really are such a miraculous and remarkable species, us human beings. And just to give you a little bit of insight into our background from what I've been able to pick up through all my different sources, which includes what I've read, what I've downloaded through the guides and the helpers, and what I've picked up through many other sources throughout my life. That's what this is. This is an amalgamation, a synthesis of everything I've picked up. So the story is as follows, which is that the human race was created very deliberately to solve some problems. And the problem was as follows. Of the many extraterrestrial races that exist throughout the universe, there was a problem that was created, and I have to take us all the way back to the source, what some people refer to as God. So the source, in order to evolve, needed to actually externalize itself into the form of many, many different individual consciousnesses. And these form all the extraterrestrial races. And because this is a universe where everything is a free choice, there was the light and there was the dark. Um, what tended to happen in the extraterrestrial races, they embraced the positivity, they embraced the light, and they by and large rejected the negativity. And this actually caused the source a huge problem, because all these extraterrestrial races have been living in the state of universal, unconditional love, with full knowledge and understanding of everything and how everything works. And this is the beginning of my segue into our human gifts. So one of the very first gifts that we've been given as human beings is the gift of ignorance. And this is going to sound like a very strange gift indeed when you think about it, because one of the problems we face is our ignorance, simply not knowing how things work. So when we are incarnated into human form, we all experience the quality of ignorance. And when we consider extraterrestrial races and we regard them to be beings that have so much knowledge and understanding that we don't have, it's very easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking that in some way we are inferior and yet it's this gift of ignorance that is one of our greatest gifts. So I'll need to elaborate on this one in some detail. Imagine you are a being from another star system and you have an understanding and a knowledge of everything. This would seem to be like the most fantastic advantage. And yet it works out to be exactly the opposite, because what our gift of ignorance has given us is it's given us the curiosity and the drive to understand and to learn. And this really starts to tie into one of our greatest qualities, which is our quality of curiosity. So we were all born with curiosity, an innate sense of curiousness to understand why things are the way they are and how things operate. And with this curiosity combined with this ignorance, what we've done effectively is we've had to find many different ways of understanding the way the world works, the way we ourselves work and the way everything operates. So the advantage that we have of ignorance is we've had to use our drive and our determination and our curiosity to literally work everything out. So this is the great gift that science has given us. All the scientists are operating without the knowledge of the extraterrestrial beings. So they've had to come up with and create the scientific method, which is a way to understand how things work. And although there are cases where they may be way off beam, by and large, they've done wonderful work in terms of turning ignorance into inquiry, into understanding. So this is one of our real talents as a human race is that in so doing we've created new ways to understand things and we've created new ways of actually relating to the world. And this is a fantastic gift that we have. So if I go back to the extraterrestrial races that have the knowledge and understanding of everything and are living in universal unconditional love and who have rejected negativity per se, what this means is it means that they have actually defrauded themselves of the opportunity for growth and this was the fundamental issue that the source was facing because what was happening throughout the universe is that the extraterrestrial races 
with the full dose of unconditional love, with the rejection of negativity, were actually failing to grow, failing to thrive. And it went to such an extent that what happened is that race after race chose to not bother to connect with being alive anymore. In other words, they actually lost the will to live. And this is why we were created. And so the following was organized. There were some particular extraterrestrial races. I will name some of them, particularly the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Orions, and the Pleiadians, just to mention four well-known ones. These four races, plus others, contributed their genetic material to the formation of a new species. And this species was set up on a planet, on a solar system, which would experience the greatest physical density ever known. So this is the thing that I've made clear before, is that you have the fully physical beings, all the inhabitants of the Earth, we experience full physicality. The extraterrestrial races experience semi-physicality, they're much more light in terms of their energy, much more refined and subtle, but we exist in the most gross level of physical manifestation. So the great price we've had to pay for this is our lack of psychic gifts and our lack of psychic ability, which has enabled us to make the fundamental human mistake of thinking we're separate from everyone else, which has enabled us to create wars and suffering, whereby we seem to think that it's okay to hurt other members of the human race and animals and even the environment. So this all sounds to be like such a bad thing, but it's our great gift. So here's the thing. The genetic material from all these beings was encoded into a new race, which is us. And so here we are exploring in a state of ignorance with our great curiosity what life is about. And what we were given is we were given an environment which actually for most of our existence has been more than 50% negativity. Now this is an incredible burden that was placed upon us and it was placed upon us so that we would have the opportunity to resolve the karmic issues of all these extraterrestrial races. So here's the really good piece of news that I'm going to give you first of all, which is as far as the extraterrestrial race is concerned, we have done the job we set out to do. We have actually succeeded in solving all their karmic issues, which fundamentally came from rejecting negativity as a force for growth. Now, where we're all headed is to a point when we're going to experience only 2% negativity and 98% positivity. That is where we're headed. And since 2012, although it might not look like it to some people, things have definitely made a sea change and things are improving. It's easier to get in touch with the positive now than it used to be before that date. And certainly if you go back to the Middle Ages, you think what life is like for the average person in those days. Things are incomparably better. Massive improvement. For the sake of completeness, I want you to know this is not the only experiment that Source has arranged to see if beings could experience a certain amount of negativity. And in fact, in every single case where beings were exposed to a substantial amount of negativity, the result is in each case, the planet blew itself up through the over-indulgence in the negativity and the failure to succeed the way we have. So here's the bottom line. What we as the human race have done as our greatest gift is we are constantly facing negative situations and we're using our curiosity, our ingenuity and our ignorance to create new ways of working to basically resolve conflicts. So what happens in the person's life is inevitably conflict arises and we experience the negativity, the argument, the row, the war, whatever it may be. And with time and patience and effort, we reach the point where we find a way to resolve the conflict. And I want to give this lovely little microcosmic example. Imagine two people in a relationship together. And they got together, they fell in love, and they're living together, and they're having a life. And then something arises that they have to dispute about. And they go into the negative state, and they're in the state of conflict. Now what happens is they have the memory of getting together, in love and that helps them to go through the difficulties they're having and maybe even ends up in a row and there comes a certain point in their disagreement when they're able to get out of their own little petty minded view of the situation and see things from the perspective of their partner and thus begins the conflict resolution in that relationship 
And in some cases, what happens is a couple will resolve their conflict by literally going to bed and having sex with each other. Sometimes they're quite happy to sit and look at each other and stare in each other's eyes and say the words, I love you, which is what connects them together in the first place and therefore reconnects them. So this is another example of conflict resolution in daily life when two people in their relationship get into conflict. They find a point whereby they can reach a place of understanding and the conflict gets, gets resolved. This is one of our greatest gifts as human beings to transform negativity through conflict resolution and to regain a state of love and to rekindle the space of love that we began with in that particular relationship. That is such an important gift that we have as human beings. So what I want to say next is I want you to be very keenly aware that extraterrestrial races have been observing the human race all the way through our development and you can begin to understand why bearing in mind what I've said so far when you think that we were actually created after the genetics to be the means to resolve their karmic issues of course that'd be one really big reason why they'd be watching us the other reason why they'd be watching us is to see how we handle negativity I'll focus in on one of these extraterrestrial races the Pleiadians the Pleiadians were given an opportunity to experience 2% negativity and they were so discombobulated, freaked out and disturbed by it, they rejected it completely. And they remained in their universal unconditioned love with a lack of opportunity for growth, which is what they have. So here's the paradox. The paradox is this. These extraterrestrial races know so much more than we do. Their technologies and their techniques are so much more advanced than ours are. And yet they're watching us because our ability to transform negativity is second to none. And thereby we have actually solved the fundamental problem that Source is facing, which is the idea of all these beings failing to embrace negativity and some of them choosing to cease to exist. This problem has been solved by us and our ability to solve problems and resolve conflicts. So our innate curiosity is one of these fundamental qualities which is programmed into us through our genetics, which gives us the edge over the ET races. Really important. So our ability to handle negativity is remarkable and extraordinary and is our great gift. The ignorance which enables us to find new ways of working is another of our great gifts. And because we've succeeded in resolving the karma of the ET races, in terms of discovering a way to handle negativity and to resolve conflicts, this then enables us to embrace what is one of our greatest gifts and has been prophesied by science fiction writers since before the 1950s and since, which is as follows. As one of the people on my most recent initiation Universal Soul Retrieval training retreat put it, so the monkey gets to go to space. That was the way she put it, and it's a really beautiful way to put things, because if you look what's happening in the world today, we have already reached the stage where human beings have gone up into space, and a man has walked on the moon, and the Russians, as I understand it, are already preparing a Mars mission, whereby those that sign up will not be returning. We've really made this huge leap and we are moving out into space as a human race. And I want you to understand how significantly crucial this is for us. Because as beings have learned how to resolve conflicts through working with negativity in a productive way, what we are going to be given the gift to do as a human race is to create ways by which we can create our own space vehicles, travel out into space and share the knowledge that we've gained through the gift of our ignorance with these other races. This is why they're watching us so closely and such attention to detail because they know we've done the biggest piece of work and the best is yet to come. So human beings are going out into space. A human being that can conceive of an idea in their thoughts and can write it down on paper or make a film about it is already setting things in motion. This film is being made on a device which in the Star Trek universe is called a pad and we now call an iPad. It's touchscreen technology and you hand the device to the person and they've got all the information that you've worked out. That is an example of something that was created in the mind of a science fiction writer and is now reality. Well the other most obvious one is faster than light drive. 
as a shaman who trains people and who does journeys regularly, what I do is I make the shaman's contract, which I leave my body behind and I travel anywhere in space-time and I can find and retrieve soul parts. I can deal with negative energies and I can give people the healing of lifetimes. This is all normal stuff for shamans and it's done the world over. And what is so exciting to me is to know this. When I was a child, I used to look up at the night sky and I looked up at the stars and I had this sense of knowing. And this is the other important thing I want to add to the film about what we are programmed. We are programmed with this curiosity, but we're programmed with something else too. We're programmed with this impulse to return home. This is something I felt all my life. I knew that wherever I lived on this earth, it could be a place I could live and enjoy, but it didn't really feel like home. And the reason why is with my relentless honesty, I knew there was an impulse inside me. So this impulse, which we are programmed within genetically, is actually what is causing people to create amazing technologies to actually lift off the Earth's incredibly dense gravitational well and go out into the stars. And this is the thing, rather than us going out into the stars feeling inferior, that all these extraterrestrial races can do all these wonderful things and they have all this knowledge, it's actually the other way around. We're going to go out with the gift of our ignorance, the gift of our problem-solving abilities, and the gift of showing them how to cope with the 2% negativity which is waiting for them when they're ready to take it on. So we get exactly the opposite situation going on. Our negativity levels are dropping down to 2%, and theirs are going to be rising up to a maximum of 2%. And the idea of a whole race of beings choosing to cease to exist is going to become history. And that thanks to us. So this is why we are so observed, so carefully watched, and so appreciated by all these races of beings. There is some stuff on the internet which promotes the idea of extraterrestrials as being superior. I'm putting this out there to act as a counterbalance so that you can understand that it's not just a matter of that we've got so much to learn from them, which we have, but also they've got a lot to learn from us too. And it's this wonderful symbiosis, this synergy between us, the fully physical beings, and the semi-physical beings of all these races that is going to interact in the most glorious way imaginable. I'm surprised I'm being directed to give this information, but I'm going to do so. We are at the moment, with our physical bodies, we inhabit what we call the third dimensional universe. People who take unusual plants and do shamanic journeys know it's possible to enter other dimensions. And we as a human race are in the process of downloading the fourth and the fifth dimension into our consciousness. Our pineal glands are becoming more strongly activated. Psychic powers are increasing. It's an exciting time to be alive. I'm going to tell you about another race of beings having another form of existence. These beings exist in the second dimension and their future is to experience third dimensional reality. In other words, what is on the plate for them in the near future is what we are currently experiencing. Now this is quite a nice little allegorical story when you go into it. I'll tell you a little bit about second dimensional life. These beings who live in an entirely second dimensional existence find the following. They exist in a state of constant fear, suffering, torment, hatred and evil. These are those states of existence which for them are completely normal. And they are suffering from the most terrible problem because from their second dimensional perspective they know that something's coming. They're very frightened of it for the following reason. For a 2D being the possibility of 3D existence actually for them means total annihilation. And so they are convinced that 3D beings and anything more evolved than that is actually out to get them. And the way they are being prepared for their new existence is fascinating. This is what's happening to them. They are receiving dreams. And in their dream states what happens is they taste dreams where they experience having a nice time, neutral existence and a very small dose of love. This is absolutely terrifying for them and causes them to feel even more determined that they must do everything they can to resist this next stage because all they know is suffering, torment, hatred, evil and all the rest of the qualities that I mentioned. So 
that's a nice way just to give you an idea of being in one state of existence and taking the next step could actually be a little bit intimidating. So no matter, no matter how intimidated it might feel for us to feel that we're moving from our third dimensional existence to more rarefied forms of existence, having more powers, the ability to be in more than one place at the same time, the ability to be anywhere at any time, the ability to manifest anything that you wish, all of these qualities which might seem quite intimidating, are as nothing compared with the difficulties that these 2D beings are facing. And they're being helped in as every way possible. But you can imagine from that mindset which they're in, how difficult it is to, for them to be helped. But nonetheless, that is the journey they're on. And inevitably, that's what's happening to them. They're being reborn into the third dimensional world, which for them is going to be a great breakthrough. Just as there's a huge breakthrough for us, to become aware that we are multidimensional beings able to operate in all levels of existence, which is what shamans and other practitioners have been doing for more than 40,000 years. It is such an exciting time to be alive. So what I want you to do is to celebrate yourself for being alive. Celebrate yourself for any time you ever experience negativity with a human being, got into conflict and found some way to resolve that conflict and then you felt better with that person. This is your gift and it's not just your gift to yourself, it's not just gift, your gift to the race, it's a gift to the wider picture. And so I thank you all very much indeed for being on this exciting journey with us. Bye for now. Thank you.